guys today. I'm so excited. And uh, it's my first time here at Victory Church on the Rock, but um, as many of you guys have probably no idea who I am, you're wondering who this guy is up here talking to you guys. Um, my name is Cooper. I work at the uh, Royal Oak Victory Church up in Calgary. Um, Dustin and I have been great friends for a long time. And uh, so, yeah, so I had the privilege of being able to come speak to you guys today. And even though you guys don't know who I am, um, I may not attend this church, but you guys are all family to me. Um, first off, because we're all united as, as fellow believers in Christ, but also because we are part of a bigger victory family together, and so I am just blessed. This is like coming to see family, coming to see people that, that we love, and so I'm so, so excited to be here today. And as I said, it's, uh, it's an honor and a privilege any time I get to stand up on, on any pulpit and preach, and, um, and it's just a blessing that I hold really, really true to. But today, of all days, holds an even more special place in my heart. And, um, and so I wanted to pause today before, before I dive into our word, before I dive into the message which all, with all of you guys, to really just honor two people that are, are so brilliant. They're two of my best friends, two people I consider to be family, two of the uh, spiritual leaders that, that my wife and I respect so much. Um, for those of you who are wondering who the supermodel that came today, that's my wife. Get some brownie points while I'm up here. Um, but that is my lovely wife. And so, um, but I want to honor two of the, the most special people in our life. And this is your new pastors, Pastors Dustin and Beth. And they are spirit-filled leaders who, who have dedicated their lives now to building the kingdom of God. And you know, it says in, um, in Proverbs, it says that where, the, where there is no vision, the people perish. And I can tell you from experience that Dustin is a man of vision, that Pastor Dustin has great godly vision for this church. And as we know, behind every great man is an even better woman that is standing next to him. Amen. Yeah. And so um, Beth is right there alongside him. And she's the one that brings the vision to life. Dustin and I are similar in that way. We can dream all day, but we need somebody to bring that vision to life. And Beth does that. And so so I just wanted us to take a moment just to give them a hand, give them both a hand, Pastors Dustin and Beth. Um, they are amazing people. And you know, my prayer um, is that this church will just continue to rally around them both um, as they lead Victory Church on the Rock into a newfound vision, a newfound direction that God I know is speaking into them um, constantly. From a personal side, I love both of you guys, and I know that God is going to do such a mighty work here. Um, through both of you, just as you continue to seek him for wisdom and discernment in terms of leading this church. And so I am, I am beyond excited to see what happens with Victory Church on the Rock. I know big things are on the horizon. But before I completely break down and start crying up here, and you guys are wondering, like, why did they invite this guy up here? What's he doing? Um, let's dive into our message today, and let's, get, let's hear from the Word of God. And um, when Dustin asked me to come share today, I, I really felt God speaking into my spirit a word that I believe is perfect for the current season that you guys are in. And it flows right out of the celebration of your pastors, and really what we're going to talk about today is the celebration of your church. And when we look at this stage right here, I want to talk about how much value there is in this stage. And I'm not talking about monetary value because as we know, it's a couple pieces of wood and maybe some concrete underneath. That's not the value that I'm talking about, but I'm talking about the value in the moments that have been experienced right here. The moments that have been experienced right here. You know, my wife and I went for coffee with uh, Pastor Dustin and Beth a little while ago, so a few months ago now, and we were talking about that very same thing with them. Just the value of the church, that the church is the place where we developed into the people that we are today. You know, the church was the place that I developed a relationship with my now wife. The church is where Dustin and Beth went from being friends of ours to becoming family. And the reason I'm sharing this all with you today is because I felt God saying something specific and so beautiful this week as I prepared this sermon. And that was that you are walking on sacred ground. You are walking on sacred ground. This is sacred ground here. And see, sometimes we get caught up in all the programs and the routines of church, and you know, we get used to all just the, the, um, the schedule and the routine of being at church, but what, something changes when we realize that this is much more than the programs, that this is sacred ground, and this is family. And so this is, this is your church, this is your house, this is your family that is continuing to be built with God. And there's something beautiful when we gather together as believers and are building something for God and with him. And you know, even just thinking about it, I tend to get a, a bit emotional about this whole topic because 
It's just crazy as I look around this room, you know, I, I see family. And it's people that I've never met. I've never met you guys a day in my life, but I see family. I see God's children, and I see current and future leaders. You know, I see people that I get to share eternity with. And that's beautiful. That is beautiful. There's something so beautiful in that. And, you know, I shared some examples of, of how this, this ground or the church is sacred for me. But I think if all of us were to look at our lives, we would see how important this place is for all of you as well. You know, maybe for some of us, this was the place where you first accepted Jesus into your life. Or maybe you recommitted yourself to him right here in this sanctuary. These are beautiful, beautiful moments. You know, maybe you finally found the family you're desperately looking for right here in this place. Whatever your story may be, whatever it is, the incredible part is that God is not done. God has not done what he is going to do. He is far from done from building those same moments right here in this place. He is far from done. And so that's why today's message is titled Sacred Ground, Why the Local Church Matters. Sacred Ground. Sacred Ground. It is so beautiful. See, there are a few things that I want to highlight for us today as we go through the message because I want us all to see the true value in, in church as a whole, in the people as the body of Christ. And if COVID and this season that we've been in has taken anything from us, it's been that we've spent so much more time in confrontation or confusion and much less time in celebration or connection. And this is so important for us to realize that that celebration and connection with God is why we are here. It is why we are here. And so for those of you that are taking notes with us this morning, the very first point I want you guys to see of why this place is sacred is because we experience united worship. United worship, corporate worship, together as a family. And that is so, so important. We see in Acts chapter 16, verse 24 to 26, it talks about this. It says, this is when Paul and Silas are in jail, and it says, Having received this order, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. Now that shows us the power of coming together and singing songs of praise. So, you know, Paul and Silas, they had, they had been beaten, they had been bruised, they had been placed in shackles, they had been locked away. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Kind of sounds like what COVID has been like for many of us in this last little while. That we've been beaten, we've been bruised, we've been shackled, we've been isolated in so many different aspects of our life. And if I can tell you something this morning, it's that, you know, we may have experienced more grief than ever before. But if we look at what Paul and Silas' response to that grief was, we can learn a lot in this moment. And that was that they sang songs of praise, even in the dark places. Songs of praise. See, the unity between the two of them and their songs of praise were not just for their own purposes, but they sang out praise for, for other people as well, for each other, for the other prisoners that were there. See, corporate worship has great power. And this is why we just began our service with corporate worship. It has great power because you know what it does? It reminds us of two things. It reminds us of two things every time we worship. The first is it reminds us who's in control. It reminds us who's in control. When we come into this sacred ground, we get the ability to combat all the trials and warships and shackles that we may feel with songs of praise. It shows the enemy who's in charge. It shows the enemy where our strength lies and it prepares us to receive the word of God with open hearts and minds. Rather than having that clouded vision that we sometimes have by all the suffering that happens outside of these walls. What it really does is it turns up the volume on God and it turns down the volume of this world. And that is so important for us to do every time we come into that worship setting is to just turn down that worldly volume that can get so loud and so constant and just turn up the volume of God. You know, the second thing our corporate worship does is it shows support. And as I prepared for this, I thought this one is so beautiful because it shows support how many of us have ever come into uh, that worship setting where we come into this place and you're just not feeling it? Like we've had those moments where you come in and you're just down, the week has been hard, it's just been a struggle, and you come into this place and, and you don't really want to sing, you don't really want to lift your hands, it's just been really hard. But then what happens is all of a sudden you start feeling 
the presence of the Holy Spirit moving. You start feeling everybody around you singing. And it lifts your spirits that, so that you can start to raise your hands and praise God as well. See, there, that is something that we only receive in that corporate worship setting like this. That when we sing and lift our hands in worship, you are not just doing it for yourself, but we become united and we can help others lift those hands up as well. Those other people that need lifting up as well. You know, so my prayer is that each of you feel this exact same thing every time you come here and worship. That you feel that you have 60 other people here that are worshiping not only for themselves, but also to lift you up as well as a united family together. You know, this is where we become united. This is where worship becomes more than just singing songs and turns into an incredibly powerful, sacred moment where we become one voice singing praises to our beautiful Heavenly Father. You know, so that united worship, that corporate worship is so, so important. And now that we understand how important and unique that corporate worship aspect is, I want to go into the second point of this sacred ground, which is covenant relationship. Covenant relationship. So we have united worship, now we have covenant relationship. It's funny, you know what the definition of a covenant is? It's an agreement which brings about a relationship or commitment between God and his people. A relationship or commitment. You know, see, whether you are here for the very first time, and if you are, welcome. It's awesome to see you. You won't see me again for a while, but I love you anyway. Um, if this is your first day, we're so happy you're here. Or if you've been coming here for 20 years, it does not matter. The second you step foot into these doors, you are adopted into covenant relationship. You are adopted into covenant relationship. That means that we commit to helping you become the best version of yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, that is sacred. That is sacred to be able to look around the room and know that you have people here that want the best for you, that want the best for you spiritually, that want the best for you physically, mentally, emotionally, all of it, because that's what family does. That is sacred. You know, this is something you don't find all the time. Now, does that mean that we don't make mistakes? Absolutely not. There's going to be times when we make mistakes. There's going to be times where we fight, where we argue, where we don't do the right things all the time. And sometimes that will result in us hurting one another. But we still remain committed to the family. Because how many know families fight? Families argue. Families don't always get along. But at the end of the day, we know where our heart is for one another. And it's out of a place of love for our brothers and sisters in Christ. See, that's what it means to be part of the Victory Church on the Rock family. That's what it means to belong to a community. What this really is, it's, it's Ephesians 4, verse 16 in action. It says, from the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which each is equipped. When each part um, does its work, is, or when each part is working properly, it makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. That's what we're trying to do. Everyone has a part. Everyone has a piece to play. Everyone has a role. And we want to grow the body of Christ and build each other up in love. That's such a beautiful image in the Word of God. And you know, we see this practically even in the world around us. I was doing some, uh, some research and some studying a little while ago, and, and I was looking at these Belgian horses. You know those ones that like, used to like, carry like, the trailers, stuff behind them, whatever those things are called? Um, <laughs> probably wasn't a trailer at that time. But anyway, um, the Belgian horses that carry those things, I was doing some research on those, and, uh, and the, it said that one horse can carry up to 8,000 pounds. That is mind-blowing, 8,000 pounds. I could not believe it. So crazy. And, but the, it gets even crazier because when I was reading farther down, it said that when you put two horses side by side, you would think initially, well, they could probably pull 16,000 pounds because... There's two of them, right? Like, it just makes sense. But that's actually not the case. When you put two horses beside each other, they can pull up to 22,000 pounds. 22,000 pounds. And you know what's even crazier is once they start training these horses and working with them and they start working together with the same group, it can get up to 32,000 pounds for two horses. This is crazy. Absolutely mind-blowing to me. But what it really illustrated to me is the power of covenant relationships. The power of relationship with each other. Because what it said, the reason why these horses can carry so much more is because they always are fighting to have a neck ahead. They're always pushing each other and, and spurring each other on. And you know, it says in the Bible, as iron sharpens iron, they are pushing each other towards better. 
And that is exactly what we can do here at the church. But there's very, very key thing, and this is where that training aspect comes in. This is very, very key. They have to be moving in the same direction. As soon as these horses start going sideways, they are not even pulling 8,000 pounds anymore. They might pull each other, and that's about it. So we need to get on the same path. We need to find that godly vision, that godly purpose, and we need to run after it together. And I promise you, when you run after it together, there is some beautiful, beautiful things that start to happen. Because you see, right now, in this very moment, you could be sitting in this room with someone that could take you from experiencing 25% of your potential to experiencing 90% of your potential. Right now in this room. Right now. And that is amazing. And you know what the best part about that is? Is that person needs you just as much as you need them. That person needs you just as much as you need them. It's so, so important for us to fight for one another, to run together, to be able to chase the vision and purpose that God has for us because I promise there is amazing things that God will do in those moments. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 to 21, it says this. It says, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than we ask or think, according to the power at work, Within us, I want us to focus on that, within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. You know, when we read this verse and we talk about that abundance and all the things that God can do, if we really read this, it says, according to the power at work within us. Within us. The power is already within you. It's already there. We just need to bring it to the surface. We need to spur each other on. We need to get that power to the surface. See, the gifts... God placed within you were put there when you were born. They were put inside of you when they were born. And we see this very thing talked about in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. He says, each of you has received a gift. Each of you. That means every person in this room, even though we may feel at times we don't have any gifts, that we don't have God working inside of us, I'm here to tell you the word of God does not lie and those gifts are there. Those gifts are inside of you. It says, each of you has received a gift. Use it in service to one another. Use it in service to one another. Once again, bring us back to what are these gifts for? They are for community. They are for relationship. They are for us to be in unity with one another. See, the ability to accomplish big things is inside every person in this room. But the problem is that we forget we are part of a body. We are part of a body. And that is so, so important. So I don't care if you are five years old or 105 years old in this room today. If you have breath in your lungs, God is not done doing the work that he has started within you. There is still purpose for your life. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about that. It says the church is, a, is a one body made up of many members. That's what we are. That's a body of Christ. That's why when I came today, I, you guys are part of the body. You're part of the family. It is all one united church together trying to build the kingdom of God. See, we are here to build heaven and rob hell. That is why we are here on earth to do. And so we want to do that together. So we need to understand that, that um, in order for, for these gifts to reach these potentials, just like the horses in that, that example, we, we need to just come together as one body with many, many members. See, some of us have been running around wondering why, why is things so hard? Why do I not have connection? What is going on? And we're running around trying to fight this battle, um, but we don't have any legs. And so it makes it really hard to fight a battle without any legs. And we're wondering why things have been so difficult. It's because we need to understand that we are part of a body that comes together. And when we find those people, that horse to run alongside us, all of a sudden we get some legs and we start and we're able to do so, so much more. So use your church family as support and also be support to those around you so that we can fulfill the call of the body of Christ. That's why in, verse, um, in that verse that we read in Ephesians, it says the power is within us to him be glory in the church. The church is our, our, our training ground. This is our sacred place to be able to make mistakes, to fail, to learn, to grow. This is where we have our talents sharpened. And so come into this place and be you. Don't try and be anybody else because if you try and be somebody when you're at the supermarket and you're somebody different when you're in traffic, not looking at anybody specifically, I don't know you guys, it's fine. Um, but if you're different when you're in traffic, if you're different when you're with your friends, if you're different when you're with your family and you're just a different person in all these different areas, how will you ever know when true transformation happens in your life? How will you ever know when true transformation happens in your life? We want to come into this place and be real. 
Be yourself because God will work with that. He will continue to grow you and build you in that moment. You know, I recently read um, about a, uh, an American missionary, and he was in um, Papua New Guinea, which is really cool. I would love to go there. But he asked, uh, he asked a native for, for the best route to get from one place to another. He's like, you know, I need to try and get over there. How, what's, how do I get there? What do I do? You know, the native kind of looked at him with a puzzled look, and he was like, ah, uh, you know, there's all kinds of routes. I, I don't know. There's lots of different ways to get there. He continued, and he said, well, you know, we could, we could go through, through the bush, and we could um, visit some friends along the way, or we could take the coastal route. The, the, the sun will be strong, but, um, but an old man lives there and knows many stories from World War II. And if we take the road, we can talk to some members of my wife's family who live on the other side of the river. The missionary's starting to get really frustrated, and he's like, all I wanted to know is how to get to this place. None of this is what you're telling me is helping me. I just want the best route. How do I get from point A to point B? Then it hit him. His American idea of best was the most efficient, easiest way to get there. But for the Papua New Guinea man, the best was determined by which relationships were able to be built along the way. This is so important for us to shift that mindset. What relationships can we build? What can we do? How can we come together? The idea of best based on the world versus the idea of best based upon God's word. That's what we need to be able to focus on. We're not just a collection of individuals here who just happen to meet at the same place every week. (laughs) That's not what this is about. Um, We are to become the family of God, which means to be a part of covenant deep relationship. So we have united worship, we have our covenant relationship, and the last thing I want to talk about today in this whole area of sacred ground is being part of Church on the Rock means that you get spiritual covering and accountability. Spiritual covering and accountability. That is so key in terms of creating a sacred atmosphere. Because as humans, it's natural that we tend to drift spiritually when we're not connected relationally. I'm going to say it one more time so we get it. As humans, it's natural that we drift spiritually when we're not connected relationally. See, a church is not required for salvation or spiritual growth. It's not. But without it, both become much more challenging. Both become much more challenging. Without the church as the foundation, which really the church is, is the organized body of Christ, the message of Jesus will move much slower. You're going to be that horse running by itself. But, and, um, and when we, we drift from com- a community of believers, the human mind begins to rationalize things. You, I'm sure we've all experienced this in different ways, where it says, you know, things like, I love God, he loves me, I don't need church, I'm good. We're just going to have a good old time, which is great. And it's awesome to have that relationship, but we weren't meant to walk this road alone. And that's true, but it's only the half true. And half truths often get us down a very dangerous road. When we start to live in those half-truths, it can get us down a very different road. Because the other half to that statement that I just said is the overwhelming evidence that when we are connected to a group of believers, the likelihood of your continued spiritual growth is exponentially higher. Exponentially higher. You know, it's just like anything in life. When you have accountability partners and people that challenge you, we always experience more success and growth. Those accountability things are so so huge. And so as a leader personally and as a preacher and someone that shares the word of God, every time I step on this stage, I'm doing so with the sole purpose of trying to help us grow, trying to help each one of us grow. That's my responsibility. And it outlines it very clearly in scripture. It says we are to consistently keep watch over your souls and guard your spiritual welfare. We want to make sure we guard that, we learn the truth, we study the word of God, and we grow in our spiritual journey and our spiritual walk. Because the local church is here as a resource, as a spiritual covering for its members. And and I want to ensure that that all of you feel that you have somebody to, to intercede, to pray, to fight battles for you. That's what we're here to do together. I know for a fact, I can say without a doubt, that your leadership team and Pastor Dustin and Beth will will give you the opportunity to come and they will pray with you. They will support you. They will fight those battles alongside you. They will do it, I promise you. If you're you're nervous, go talk to them. I promise it'll be a great conversation. They don't bite all the time. Um, 
but they, uh, <laughs> no, they're, they're great. They will be awesome. They would love to do that for you. And the reason they do that is so that they can cover you each week with protection and refreshment that can only come from the Holy Spirit. That can only come from the Holy Spirit moving in those moments. And so, you know, if you come and ask them for prayer every week, great. That doesn't show weakness. It's simply taking advantage of a resource that is part of being a part of the local church. That's all it is. It's using the resource that is here, the resource that God intended it to be, the sacred ground of the local church. Because that is sacred. That is something you're not going to get at the grocery store. You might, but I don't know what what it's going to look like, but you might get that at the grocery store. But when you come into this place, that is sacred. That is important to have that spiritual covering over your life as you walk out of these doors. It's so, so valuable. You know, I personally have experienced supernatural breakthrough by simply asking for prayer, by simply having somebody pray over me. And I know many of you have probably experienced that as well. So use the resource. Use the resource. Use each other. Be that, uh, be that church that is able and willing to pray for each other. You know, there is nowhere else like the church where we get to live our transparent lives together and not only support each other on a natural level, but can support each other on a supernatural level as well. See, every member of the body of Christ needs spiritual covering of the local church and the pastors. We need it. We need it. It is part of what we need in our daily life. This covering is like a shelter in the midst of a world that's filled with deception, temptation, demonic activity, all of these things that we battle with every single week. We need covering. I know I'm up here speaking today, but I need that covering just as much as you guys do. I go for prayer all the time to be able to just be covered to take on what we do during the week, to be a light of the world, to be the salt and the light when we leave this place. We need that covering. It's so, so, so valuable. So regardless of how long you've been a Christian or how how gifted you may be, a believer should always seek to operate under the safety of a biblical spiritual covering found in the local church. There is a, this is where I feel that you know, God is, is really taking you guys in terms of next steps as, as members of this church. And I, I felt the Holy Spirit speaking this as I, as I prepared to, um, for today. But you guys have been kind of in the honeymoon phase. Dustin and Beth came in here. You guys are in the honeymoon phase. It's been great. You know, they look so cute and it's so fun and great. It's awesome and I love it. It's so cool. Um, the honeymoon phase is the best. It's awesome. My life is just a constant honeymoon phase with my wife. Brownie points. Um, um, but you guys, have been, you guys have been in the honeymoon phase, and it's awesome. Um, but, and, and I'm sure it's been an incredible journey. But I do believe that the foundations have been set for you guys. The foundations have been built, and now we need to start deepening the relationship you have with one another. Start deepening that relationship. Go from friends to family. Go from pastors to family members. That's what we want to do. We want to be able to unify all of you guys together because guess what? We have a world right now that is so broken, that is so hurting, that is so in need of Jesus. And if they walk into this room and the second they walk in this door, they feel the Holy Spirit, they feel united, they feel connected, I promise you, you guys could change this city. You guys could change this city. We need to create that atmosphere so that when people come here, they know that it can't be anything but God. It can't be anything but God to have that relationship with one another. Ephesians chapter four, verse two to three says, always be humble and gentle, be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourself united in spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. See, is there's nothing that strengthens relationship more than that spiritual covering. As I said, there's people that are looking for what that verse just says. There's people desperately searching for it right now in our world, right outside these doors. Let's be that place. Let's be that place. That's how we bind ourselves together when we share our heart, when we are transparent, when we ask for prayer, when we just come together as one family. You know, what that means is when we, when we look at the struggles we're facing and all the things when it becomes hard, you know, those relationships when they become so hard because it's like our greatest fear, this is actually crazy, one of our greatest fears in the world is being discovered for who we really are. Wild. Our greatest fear is to be discovered for who we really are. I'm going to be honest with you, if you want deep, transparent, honest relationship, you're going to have to let people know who you really are. You're going to have to let people know who really, you really are. But the beauty of it within the church and within the setting we're in is God already knows your struggles. 
God already knows where you fall short. God already is aware of all the mistakes you made. He already knows of your sins. So wouldn't it feel much better to have someone to open up to about those things and get it off your chest and to be real? That's what we're here for. That's what the church is about. It's the most freeing thing when you finally stop hiding and become real with a family that supports you. It is so freeing. Some of us have been in chains and bondage for so long, and it is the most freeing thing when you just say, this is me, and this is who I am, and I know I'm early or I'm on this part of this road, but if we can come together, I know I'll be here and here and here and continue to move forward as we come as one group. You know, that doesn't mean you go around, I'm just going to clarify, it doesn't mean you go around like killing people and all this kind of stuff. I'm not giving you permission to do any of that stuff. I'm saying that God knows that we struggle in areas and there's things that we, we aren't great at. But Dustin, Dustin's going to be the one, that the pastor Dustin, he'll be here, he'll pray for you, he'll support you, he'll pat you on the back, he'll be able to help you get back on the path that God has for you. So will everybody else to come together as that family. You know, that, that sacred ground that we talk about, it's united, it's united worship, it's covenant relationship, it's spiritual covering and accountability. And you know what the beautiful part of that is? You have it all right here. It's here. It's here to be stewarded. It's here to grow. It's here to build, but it's here. You know, I don't have to be here for weeks on an end to be able to tell. It is here. It is in this room. There is family already. Just continue to build that, continue to strive to grow that. You know, in closing, I'm gonna invite... Uh, Dustin to come forward, but um, every single week when you step foot in these doors, my prayer is that you will experience all three things we talked about. As I said, they're here already, but look for them. You know, it says that, that we, we find what we look for. Look for these things, seek them out. Look for that united worship and bask in it. Look for covenant relationships, reach out to people you've never talked to and, and build it. And as I said, utilize the resource that is spiritual covering and accountability. Because how lucky are we that we get to receive that each and every week? We are so, so lucky. If I can leave you with one statement, this is what it is. It is when we begin to see the church as a sacred blessing and not a spiritual obligation, it will transform your life and it will also transform your church. I'm going to say it one more time. When we begin to see the church as a sacred blessing and not a spiritual obligation, it will transform your life and also transform your church. It will turn this place into a training ground, a safe haven, an overflowing well of God's blessing. I firmly believe that God is going to reveal to you the true value of his church over this next time. The question at the very beginning is, why does the local church matter? Well, my prayer is that today you got a glimpse into just how important God's church really is. I challenge you to get involved, to volunteer, to serve, because you will never feel more fulfilled than when you begin serving in this sacred ground, in the church of God. Building his kingdom is where we feel our fulfillment. So I encourage you, get involved, reach out to Pastor Beth and Pastor Dustin, get involved, be a part of it. Let's stand on the sacred ground in the presence of of our, our God and, our, and the Holy Spirit. Let's stand in the midst of this sacred ground, surrounded by God's children, and prophetically claim that, th that this church will build heaven and rob hell in the name of Jesus. That God, what God's word says, that he will build his church and the gates of hell will not come against it. We declare that over this church. Let's claim that. It's time for the church to become more than a building, to become more than some songs we sing, to become more than another message we hear, to become the sacred ground that God intended it to be. The definition of sacred is simply connecting something to God. So every time we come here, let's connect it back to him. Let's give him all the, all the honor, all the glory, all the praise. My prayer is that we will turn songs to worship through connecting them to God, that we can turn conversations into covenant relationships by connecting them to God that we can turn our setbacks into slingshots through spiritual covering and accountability. Let's make this more than a service. Let's make this place sacred. Let's pray together today. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you so much. Father, we thank you for your word. Father God, we thank you so much that you are here in our presence right now. You are in our midst. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would move in this place. 
God, that we know this place is sacred, that we know that this is your church, this is your sacred ground. And so, Father, I pray that you will continue to build it. Father, I pray for every person that is in this room right now, God, I just pray that you will just give them a refilling of your Holy Spirit. That, Father, it says in your word that when we drink from you, it is a well that will never run dry. I just declare that over these people right now. That they will drink deeply of you. That that well will never run dry and that we have a purpose and a calling right now, right here at Victory Church on the Rock, that we are claiming, that we will run after, that you will go after. And that, God, that you will continue to lead and guide them every step of the way. Father, we thank you for your amazing word. We thank you. We are humbly here as your servants, and we pray that you will lead and guide every single step of the way. I pray for every person here that, that is needing prayer, that has been maybe nervous to step into it, that, that is scared of being discovered for who they are. I pray, God, that this will be a place where there is no guilt and no shame that this will be a place where it is free from, free from condemnation, God, but we will be able to come together and support one another, that we can lift each other up and be able to spur each other on just like those horses do, that we will be able to spur each other on to reach our maximum potential. Father, we know that this place is sacred. We know that this place is yours, and we just commit Victory Church of the Rock into your hands right now. You're more than capable. Your mighty hands. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, we praise you, we give you all the honor, all the glory, and we praise it in Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen.